there's like I guess three things I wanted to emphasize as we as we talk about this. You know how to how to preach the gospel of grace to the unbeliever. And the three things are this are these. The three things are these. Number one, we need to see how God has said we are to see how we are to see the people we're preaching to. Number one, how are we to see or look at the people, at the world that we're preaching to or proclaiming to or teaching or sharing with? And that was one of the things that the first thing that God showed Peter was, this was amazing. We saw this last Sunday. I don't want to repeat everything we said last Sunday, but just a quick overview. Last Sunday, um, we saw how God actually showed Peter to no longer look, no longer call the world unclean. That's right. Or unholy. Peter was not going to go into the house of a Gentile. Tina, hey, good to see you guys. Um, Peter was not going to go into the house of a Gentile because from a Jewish uh, standpoint, under the law, Gentiles were unclean and they couldn't even visit a Gentile or go in their home or whatever. And God showed Peter through that incredible vision of a sheet being lowered from the sky down with unclean animals. Remember the story? Three times God saying, Peter, eat. And Peter says, no, Lord, I don't eat unclean. I've never, I've never eaten unclean animals and so forth as a good Jew. And the Lord said three times, what God has cleansed, no longer consider unholy. And then the sheep went back up into the sky. Yep. A picture of the four corners of the sheep speaks of the four corners of the world, north, south, east, and west, that God has totally cleansed the world. That God was in Christ, reconciling, reconciling the whole world to himself, not wow. counting their trespasses against them anymore. That's right. Now this doesn't mean they're they're actually forgiven already automatically. They have to believe, they have to receive this gift. But the point is God wants us to look at the world. He says, Don't call, don't call what God has cleansed, don't call unholy or or anymore. Don't call it. God calls those things that be not as though they were. You and I must see people differently as we preach the gospel of grace. We must see people already reconciled to God. God has already reconciled himself to the world. The scripture says, now Christ in us beseeches the world. Now you be reconciled to God. Receive. He's not going to die again. It's done. He has done a work that is a completed work for all people, for all sin, yes. for all time. Yes. And he sat down. After purging us of our sin, he sat down <laughs> on the right hand of the majesty on high. Awesome. It is a done deal. So we, what we're trying to get people to see is what has already been done. Right. It changes everything. It changes how you look at people. First of all, it gets you, it gets you in the door. Peter wasn't going to walk in the door. It gets you in the door. It gets you... You look at people differently. You're willing to eat and drink with sinners. Right. See, Jesus saw this as he, he lived his life like this. That's why the Pharisees didn't understand him. He lived his life. He saw everybody forgiven <laughs> because he knew what he was going to do. Right. That's why he could say to the woman who was caught in adultery, go, woman, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He didn't just, you know, wink at sin and sweep it under the rug. He knew what he was going to do. He was going to take her sin. So he lived in faith. He called those things as though they, as those things that are not, he called them as though they are. He changed Peter's name before Peter was born again. He called him by a new name before he actually experienced it. He saw Peter, you're a reed shaking the wind. But you're not, you're not a reed, you're a, you're a rock, Peter. But he was still a reed. He did not eat three times. But he saw, he calls those things that be not as though they are. Yeah. And that's how we're to live. We're to see. It, 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 and people sense that. They sense the acceptance. When, you're, when you accept people like that, you see that they're already forgiven. And people are drawn to that. They don't, they don't feel like you're looking down your nose at them and, you know, man, you need to get saved. And no. It's a whole different way. That's why he would, he would 
mingle with sinners, so to speak. The scripture says and the Pharisees were grumbling about his association with the, with the world. He saw them all forgiven. Yeah. He saw them all cleansed because of his work. You know, many would not receive him and they would die in their sin. And that's what he said. If you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. You will die in your sin. But if you believe who I am, you will not die in your sin. In fact, you will already pass. You'll pass through death even now and into life now. Yes. And live in eternal life right now. Hey, yes. you, see you see what I'm saying? Isn't that cool? Yes. So it's really important. So the first thing we got to see as we preach the gospel of grace is that God has already done it. He's yes. done it. He, yes. he wants us not call no man unholy, call no man unclean. Peter says in Acts, he says, God has shown me that I should not call any man unholy. Has God shown you that? See, it's a personal thing. God has shown me, Peter says. God has shown me, and it's recorded for you and me to read. God has shown me that I am not to call any person unholy or unclean again. Call them. Are they unholy? Yes. Are they unclean in the flesh? Yes. Do they need forgiveness? Yes. Do they need to be born again? Yes. But you don't call them. We live by faith. We see what God has done. We see what God has done. And we see them through His eyes. Yes. Yes. And it does something. There's a, there's a dynamic. There's a heavenly dynamic that is at work. That's one reason we don't see people coming into the kingdom like we should. Because men are not seeing people already forgiven. Right. There's a heavenly, it's so important, it's repeated three times in the book of Acts. This vision of a sheep coming down to Peter, telling Peter not to call men unholy. Three times it's recorded in the book of Acts. First, the event itself. Secondly, he repeats it to um, the Jewish brothers in Jerusalem when they, they got on his case about going to, into a house. Very next chapter, we didn't get to that, the very next chapter in Acts, they got on his case about him going into the house of a Gentile. He repeated the very same thing in sequence, exactly what happened. And they went, well, what can we say to that? They, got, they received the Spirit like us. So, and then he repeated a third time in Acts 15 when they had the big meeting in Jerusalem about Gentiles coming into the church. And he repeated a third time how God had shown him this. Mm. It's very important. Three speaks of revelation. Yes, and three speaks of a revelation. Three speaks of a revealing of something. And the sheep came down three times. So three times the event itself was so important, it was shown to Peter three times, and then it's repeated three times in the book of Acts. I'm telling you, it's something God wants us to get. It's something God wants us to get. It not only changes how you preach or teach or share the gospel, share the good news, it changes how we relate to people. And they will sense, they will sense the acceptance. They will, that's, that was one of the most powerful things the Christ did. That men did not understand. The, the whole, right. Always, always to the beginning of time, holy men among unholy men were always, you know, unholy men were always uncomfortable in the presence of holy men. When I say holy men, I mean the holy in the sense of a prophet or, you know, they weren't really comfortable in their presence. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I've known people in the past that, believers, and they think it's a badge of honor. For unbelievers to feel uncomfortable in the presence. <laughs> have you known people like that? I, I, have, I have known people, and it, usually the people that are leaders in the church, like yeah. big ministry type people that you know travel around, and they kind of like the fact that people feel, ooh, that's so and so. Ooh, you know, I can't get too close. So. <laughs> that's bogus. That's right. That's, that's right. bogus. That's not Christ. That's not Christ. People were so welcome in his presence, a prostitute could wash his feet with his tears. The Pharisees were shocked by that. How did she feel so accepted to come into that meeting of Pharisees? She was so in love with him, so felt, so accepted by this Holy One whom no one could find any sin in. And she felt so accepted by this. This was such, this was such a... a uh, breaking of the mindset of what it normally is to be around a holy person, she was so drawn to him that she didn't care about the other holy legalist Pharisees sitting around. She only saw him. Yeah, it's good. The powerful thing that Christ did was that he, everybody knew he was he was white, hot, holy, perfect, mm. otherworldly, and yet they felt 
accepted. This is not like it's ever been. Thousands would come out to hear him speak. They were drawn to him. 